Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jewish Week Online. I'm your host, Aaron Herman. This January has been a very busy month for Startup Nation with over $1.3 billion of acquisition and investment. We're seeing that the global economy is looking at Israel for the next big thing. We had the opportunity to speak with Jack Gottesman of Israeli startup Umove about their new application, UHealth. UHealth utilizes mobile eye tracking technology to do exercises to enhance your concentration. Let's take a closer look. Startup Nation is, is known for a lot of different things. Uh, and especially now in, in the medical field, as technology is evolving, um, there's new ways to enhance your life, uh, but more importantly, to enhance your attention span and memory. And uh, you, you're really doing something uh, incredible and making things simple, fun, and unique uh, to help people with their attention span. So let's uh, talk about uh, what you're doing. Thanks, Aaron. It's good to be with you. Uh, essentially, what we did is we created an app called You Health, uh, which is based on years of scientific research. Uh, but it used to be very difficult to implement that research. Very similar to our technology in general. Umove is a company that took a tech that's very useful, but not accessible. Face tracking and eye tracking. Tracking face movements and eye movements. Okay? Uh, until recently, this was mostly utilized by NASA, the military, high-end laboratories who had the budget to afford a $30,000, $50,000 machine. Essentially, what we did is we made this technology available on this. We put it right in your pocket. Any device with a front-facing camera can now track your face movement and your eye movement. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, essentially, the idea of this app is giving people audio commands and having them follow with their eyes. Look to the left. Look to the right. Look at the boy. Look at the girl. Look at the bluebird. Look at the yellow bird. Now, when this was developed 20 years ago, a therapist used to get down on his knee and he used to sit in front of a child and he used to put two pencils and track the eye movement. So either... In order to do that now, you would either need a very patient parent or an expensive therapist. We took that and we put it right on your phone, enabling people to improve their focus and attention simply using the uh, download away. And one of the great things, that, so I, I've been I've been trying it uh, over over the last day or so, and um, it, it's funny because like it, it, you're looking at these two birds, like the yellow bird and the blue bird, and your eyes are just like you get into it. It's very, it's a, an intuitive type of thing. But it, it's, it's uh, whenever you call in, integrate in a gamification into it, yeah. uh, it doesn't seem like you're being tested. And exactly. um, and also, the, the, it's, it's just a, a pretty you know, interface in a sense that you're not looking at these like these little chickies. You know, it's like you try to bring the person into the the experience. Yeah, um, that's the idea. And it's funny because when we were when we were in Las Vegas a few weeks ago, we were showing people a demo version. And people were like, "This is brain training. This looks like a this looks a, you know a silly little little game." And then people sit down and try, and they realize that it's not it's not as easy as it looks. And they one hundred percent. Like I, I got like thirty six percent on my first try. Yeah. And I was like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> you know, I know I have an attention span, you know, of zero. So um, sometimes, so it's very. Well, we hope you'll continue using the app, and that you'll. Then you, and that you'll improve as, uh, as as days goes on. But but yeah, the idea is to give yourself a workout. It's like going to a gym. And once you build that regimen, it's uh, our belief that after a couple of weeks, you're going to see improvements in your real life. It feels focused and attention. Um, when you first came up with this this concept, um, what were you like? You you said you were looking back at what people were doing before before tech. Um, was, was there something you wanted to achieve like in terms of making it appealing to the general public? Well, I'll tell you that UMove is, UMove is very focused on the medical space. Um, in, addition to, in addition to this game that we, or this app that we released yesterday, um, we are also looking to release other things coming out in the future um, in the medical space. Um, the M Health space is, is really on fire right now. And the eyes are just perfect for that. Because as, as you were saying while we were chatting offline beforehand, the eyes are really a window to the brain. You know, if there's brain activity, there's eye activity. It, it's funny, I was just, um, we, as we prepare for Oscar season, I was watching this movie Theory of Everything with my wife. And it's about Stephen Hawking and how he was diagnosed and how he continued on the path of the ALS and, and how he didn't let his physical limitations inhibit him from achieving excellent things. 
So, you know, back then, it's just like what you're saying right now, before tech, there was no real way to even know that a guy like Stephen Hawking even had cognitive thoughts, right? Because here, here's someone who you knew was a genius, stuck in his wheelchair, can't move his body, can't speak. So how did you even know that there, was, that there were thoughts going on? Because they were able to figure out, you know, something as simple as blink once for yes, twice for no. This is before tech. And through, the eye, through his eye activity, they were able to see that there was brain activity. So that's the path that you move is on right now. Using your mobile device as the most advanced diagnostic tool in the world. And not only for this, but we're working with major universities across the world to, to help diagnose autism, Alzheimer's, glaucoma, ADHD. All these things that are already using eye tracking, hardware, big expensive machines, being able to replace it with something mobile and non-invasive. And there are just huge potentials. Like you look at nursing homes where you have patients who are literally bedridden um, and they, they literally communicate like through their eyes um, for like, you know, blink once for yes, blink, you know, twice for no. I, you know, they, they, people follow their eyes to, you know, to, to like the food. There's, there's a communication that happens to the eyes that some people might not understand it. That, that really is their world. Um, and yeah. you know, by, by giving them the strength and enhancing that, there's 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 huge opportunities. Absolutely, and it's funny we're talking about the medical space because a lot of people see our technology and they think, you know, this is if you if you you know, us as a company, we have a, a Google alert set for eye tracking, and you can see that there's a big trend now. People want to control things with their eyes, but it doesn't really make sense. It's not natural. Imagine if you were driving a car with your eyes. Okay, you're driving, and or I guess you wouldn't be doing this because you're driving with your eyes, but if you're looking forward to the road and then you just look over there to glance at a stop sign, you would veer completely off the road because you, because you looked away. Um, but when it, it talks of, when it comes to controlling with your eyes, exactly like you said, that, that's really for, for people with, uh, with paralysis and people with extreme physical limitations. And uh, we hope to be able to help them as well. When uh, I was reading this article, it must have been like, maybe like three or four months ago, and they were saying how people are now using iPads for kids who are who have autism or are really in, you know just have no communication but their eyes and now they're playing games on the iPad with their eyes and it it sort of you know connected to me that you know this is the wave of the future like unfortunately people have disabilities but it doesn't mean that they they can't have a uh, you know fun in playing video games um, absolutely so in, in addition to the to the app that we released yesterday, you help. Um, like I said, we, we do plan on coming out with more apps in this space. Um, and we are uh, we are licensing our technology out to third party developers, and there are several of them who we've been in touch with who are interested in developing similar ideas to what you just described. Helping uh, do what you know. We we always have a laugh about it at the office. You know, we're we're taking the mobile device, which until now was the biggest distractor in the world. How annoying is it when you want to talk to someone, but they're just... So we are taking something that's the biggest distractor in the world and turning it into a tool to improve your focus and attention. Where do you see this industry going in the next two years? Eye tracking or... Eye tracking. Uh, eye tracking is, you know, like I said, once you take out the physical limitations of, of hardware, the opportunities for eye tracking are explosive. I mean, we're getting, we're getting people who are interested in... in using it, you know, things you wouldn't even think of, like take the auto industry, for example. When we were in Vegas, we spoke to a ton, a ton of automakers. And what do they want to do? It's funny, we kind of coined a term for it, we call it the three Ds of driving, okay? Drunk driving, where the eyes are not focused and kind of looking all over the place, okay? Drowsy driving, long extended blinks, people who are, or whose eyes are closed when they're behind the wheel. And of course, distracted driving. You know, the way that where we, if you and I were taught to drive when we were in driver's ed, it's you have now what you really do. You have your hands on the wheel, and you look at the road, and you kind of keep going. But today, unfortunately, if you look at people who you're on the road with, a lot of them are maybe have one hand on the wheel, and, and they're doing a lot of a lot of this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's a pattern of someone who is distracted. So if you're tracking their face movement and their eye movement, um, now you can prevent deaths on the road, or not even deaths, you can prevent uh, dangerous activities on the road. So where eye tracking is going in the next two years, we see it that the opportunity is limitless. And this is going to be available, uh, so that's, it's available on Apple now, 
and what, when do you see it going to Android um, and other and other platforms? So in terms of this specific app is only available on on, uh, on Apple. We do have other apps that are available on Android and, and others that are coming as well, um, but not quite in the in the app help space. Um, Android users like myself, I have a, I have a Samsung, are gonna have to kind of like we say, keep your eyes on us for uh, to see what's coming next. But but we do uh, we do value the Android community and, and it's on our it's on our roadmap. And where can people learn more about your company? We would probably send people either to our website, which is fantastic, or to our YouTube channel, where they could see um, where they could see actual videos of iTrack in order to understand it, because this is something that you kind of need to see to believe. Why do you think Israelis are so innovative? Why do I think Israelis are so innovative? Um, uh, you know, I was speaking to some. I actually heard a speaker last week speaking about this uh, exact idea. He said it's the Israeli chutzpah that when you put it into the business place, the idea of not taking no for an answer. And I think that that really tells the story of you move. You know, when we started, it's funny people. You go on Twitter today. Let me let me say it like this. I saw a post on Facebook or Twitter that the iPad only came out about five years ago. Okay, that's really not not so long ago. Um, and, you know, before the iPad, it's funny to imagine a time before the selfie craze, before people were taking selfies. But just a few years ago, the front-facing camera on phones didn't exist. People weren't taking selfies because it wasn't an opportunity. Phones, you know, they were called camera phones. Not every phone came with the camera. And the camera was on the back side of the phone. They didn't have one on the front. So when we started, you know, talking about not taking no for an answer, um, when the founders founded U-Move, they were working with, I think it was Nokia, was the only phone with the front-facing camera. And it would crash after like a minute because it was so weak. Um, but as we kind of continued, or, or they continued, the founders, this is before I was part of the company, with this focus on using the front-facing camera as a tool to be able to recognize face movement and eye movement and not taking no for an answer, we've kind of evolved with the industry. And now I read recently that, that it's not already, but phones are coming out with stronger front-facing cameras than rear-facing cameras because of the selfie craze. As you can see, health apps are an incredible tool to enhance one's mind, body, and soul. This is Aaron Herman, I thank you for watching.